when you're handling thirds, one of the rules that you'll need to use, a very common rule, is the product of two numbers, if it's square rooted, is equal to the square root of each individual number multiplied together. And we can verify that this works by just taking a value that we know the answer of, like for instance the square root of 36. 36 is the same as 9 times 4. So we could say then that this is the square root of 9 times 4. And according to the rule, this will be the square root of 9 times the square root of 4. And the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 4 is 2. And so we have three 2's, which are 6. So the square root of 36 is 6, as we know, and so this verifies that this rule up here seems to be correct. Now it could be that you didn't take 9 4's as being 36, but possibly chose another combination like 18 twos for instance. Well that will still work. Okay, let's show you. Square root of 36 is equal to the square root of 18 times 2. And according to the rule, this will be the square root of 18 multiplied by the square root of 2. Now 18 can be split up into two other values that multiply together to give 18. For instance, 6 times 3 or 9 times 2. Now I like the version 9 times 2 purely because I can square root a 9. I don't like 6 times 3 because I can't really square root the 6 or the 3 exactly. So I'm going to go for 9 times 2. So square root of 18 becomes the square root of 9 times 2. And then I've got that root 2 on the end. Okay? And by the rule above here, okay, we see that this is the same as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And then we've got this root 2 on the end. Now the square root of 9 is 3, okay, and then we've got the square root of 2, which I have no idea what it is, times another square root of 2. But according to the rule here, the square root of one number times the square root of another is exactly the square root of both of them multiplied together. So square root of root 2 times root 2 is exactly the same as the square root of two twos, which are 4. And you'll notice now that the square root of 4 is 2. So we have 3 times 2, and eventually we get that answer 6 again. So even by this long method here, we get the answer 6. There were other ways of getting 36, like 12 threes. And I leave it up to you to try and show that the square root of 12 times 3 will eventually filter out to 6. OK, so let's try a few more examples. Let's try, for instance, simplifying the square root of 27. Now 27 is made up of 9 times 3. And 9 is a good number to have because it is the square root of an exact value. So this is the same then as the square root of 9 times 3. And the square root of 9 is 3. And then we've got the root 3 on the end here. So the square root of 9, as I said, was 3 times root 3. And we tend to drop the time sign in cases like this. And we just call it 3 root 3. Let's try another one square root, say, of 50. Now 50, I'm thinking of a square number, a number that can be square rooted exactly, that goes into 50. And that would be 25. 25 times 2 makes 50. So this can be regarded as the square root of 25 times 2. 
square root of 25, then times the square root of 2. So this becomes 5 for the square root of 25 times just root 2. OK? And occasionally you get some very big values. I mean, take for instance the square root of 320. Try and think of a square number, a number that can be square rooted exactly, that goes into 320. And that would be 64. 64 fives make 320. So that would be the square root of 64 times 5, which we know according to the rule is the square root of 64 times the square root of 5. Square root of 64 is 8, and so we have 8 root 5. And it could be, again, that 320 is such a big number that you might not spot that it's 64 times 5. So like I demonstrated over here with the square root of 36, don't panic, just find numbers, find factors that go into 320 and just nibble away at this particular value. I'll show you then how I could break that 320 down again. Let's just try it. As I say, there's many ways that we could do this. The root of 320, let's suppose we thought of it as 32 tens, for instance. Then it would be the square root of 32 times the square root of 10. I'll drop the time sign here because I'm running out of room. 32. Can I think of a square number that goes into 32? 16. 16 twos are 32. So I can think of this as the square root of 16 times the square root of 2 times the square root of that 10. I can't think of any square numbers that go into 10, so just leave that as root 10. Square root of 16 then is 4, so I've got 4 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 10. And rather than leave it like this, I can reverse this rule over here and just say square root of 2 times the square root of 10 is the square root of 20. So I can write that as 4 root 20. But hold on a minute. There is a square number that is a factor of 20. And that would be 4. 4 fives are 20. So I can think of this now as that 4 and the square root of 20 is the square root of 4 times 5, which becomes 4 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, so I have 4 times 2 times that remaining root 5. And if I tidy this up, after all this, I find that I get 4 times 2, which is 8, root 5. The same answer. OK, it took me a lot longer. And there's plenty of other ways that you could break down 320 rather than 32 times 10. So as an exercise, what I would suggest is that you go away and try some more versions of square rooting 320 and just see if you can come down to that answer 8 root 5. So hopefully then that you will now be able to use this rule to simplify the square roots of any particular values.